now 31, I had a question on how you do section 3.5, number 77. And our directions here were to take the formula that was given to you and show how it was a transformation of a toolkit function. So here was the formula given to me, and let's talk about how that was a transformation of a toolkit function. So let me just go off to the side here. I've mentioned this in a few other videos. So your toolkit functions, they start on page 174 of your book. And when we talk about what one of our main goals in Math 31, one of our main goals is for me to give you an equation, a formula like this, and for you to just on site know what that basic graph will look like. And, and that, that knowledge starts from knowing what your toolkit functions look like. So when I'd say toolkit functions, I'm hoping that if I gave you y equals x, you knew that was the equation of a line, or y equals x squared was a parabola, or the absolute value of x was a v. And the function that we're going to use in here, the toolkit function you need to know about is the square root of x. All right, and the reason we're going to use the square root of x is because I have a square root here. So my parent function is the square root of x, and I'm shifting it and reflecting it a little bit in number 77. Now, if you know what this toolkit function right here looks like, fantastic. If not, here's how you can graph it. Oops, wrong, wrong marker. Okay, so if you have no idea what a graph looks like, you can always make your little t-table. And then you can plug in your favorite x values. Usually, I plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm not going to do that this time because I have a square root here, right? And that's lighting up one of my domain issues. I know that I can only plug in numbers that are 0 or positive. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm addressing that. I'm going to start with 0. I'm going to do 1. Instead of going to 2, I'm going to go to 4. I want to make make myself efficient, right? Four is a perfect square, so that'll be easier for me. And I could do nine, but I don't need to go that far. So I'm just gonna say, well, the square root of zero is zero, the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two. If I wanted to graph that function, All right, here we go. We had, what, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 4, 2. So it looks something like that. That is your basic square root function. All right, now how does that relate to 77? Well, I want to get this in the proper form, and when I take a look at what I see here, I see a negative out in front of that x, and I also see a positive 4. But we need to be careful. It's not ready to be seen as a transformation yet. What we have to do is factor out that negative. So let me go ahead and factor out that negative. So this would become the square root of negative of x minus 4. And if you're not sure, let me show you how this is working, right? If I was to take a look at negative of parentheses x minus 4, I want you to imagine if I redistributed that. I could distribute that negative symbol to the x, and I could also distribute that negative symbol to the negative 4. So if I was actually to perform that multiplication, negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. So you can see that my radicand, oops, not there. My radicand here is the same as my radicand here. So I've, I've just put it into a different form because then it's easier for us to see the transformations that happened. So I do have this negative symbol here, but now I have a negative 4. So this negative 4 is going to shift us right 4 units. And this negative here, I'm going to move this around, this negative is going to reflect our graph across the y-axis. Oops, across y-axis. And at this point, you could plug into technology, right, whether that's a graphing calculator or some kind of program you have on your computer or your device, and you could see what your graph looked like. But what I want to show you is how these three ordered pairs somehow get translated to this graph. So I want to go through the shifting and the reflecting with you, and we're going to do PEMDAS. So PEMDAS would have me do the minus 4 first and then the reflection second. So I'm going to shift right 4 units, and then I'm going to reflect across the y-axis. And as I'm looking at that, I see that I couldn't spell the word right correctly. That should have a T on it. Okay, so let's start with 0, 0. All right, so here's 0, 0. The first thing I'm going to do is shift right four units. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. 
All right, and then I'm gonna land here. So right now, I'm not done, but I've shifted right four units. That's getting me, oops, excuse me, to the ordered pair, negative four, zero. All right, but that's only half of it because I still need to reflect it over the y-axis. So if I find its mirror image on the other side of the y-axis, I'm over here at four, zero. So what that's ultimately telling me is that zero, zero got sent to four, zero. And that's what you see right here. You can see four, zero, oops, let me get my pen there, right there on the graph. All right, let me change colors and let's try this for one, one. So now let's see if we can get one, one. So one, one, it's here. I'm gonna move four units left. So one, two, three, four. So, so far I'm at the ordered pair, negative three, one. Okay, but I need to reflect that I need to find its mirror image on the y-axis. So if I reflect it on the y-axis, it's actually gonna come over here because I'm reflecting it across this y-axis. This is gonna get translated to the ordered pair three, one. And if you go to my graph, even though it's stretched a little funky, let's go to three and up to one, two, three. Oh, it's looking like it's 0.9. Apparently I didn't do the hottest job of graphing this thing. It should be at three, one. Oh well, what are you gonna do? All right, let's try four two. So let me change colors here. Wait for it, where are we? Um, let's go red. All right, so let's put four two in and see what happens here. So if I'm gonna go four two, all right, here was four two, I'm gonna go left four units. So one, two, three, four. So right in there, that's gonna get me to the ordered pair zero two. All right, now I need to reflect it over the y-axis. Well, since it's on the y-axis, it's gonna reflect onto itself. And here is the ordered pair, zero, two. All right, so we've got all of that happen, and I'm just noticing I have a little typo here. That should have been at three, one. I'm not sure what happened when I graphed it, but I'm confident of that point. So, so that's how you take a look at, at number 77. We got reflections, we're shifting right and reflecting across the y-axis. All right, thanks so much, everyone, bye.